Good morning, beloveds. Um, I'm really cross-eyed to, or, yeah, cross-eyed double vision. I don't know. Um, I'm somewhere in the healing process of, you know, the cataract surgery. And today it's like the unaltered eye is really cloudy. So I'm ha having trouble seeing. And this one is still fairly blurry. So I'm just like, I can't wear my glasses and I can't take them off. And I'm just like, I can't see today. <laughs> It's like everything is cloudy and messy and blurry. So we're going to do this and see how it goes. I may end up closing one eye for, for a large part of this. Um, so if you wonder why I have one of my eyes closed, it's... Yeah. Um, I knew going into this that I was going to need reading glasses. I'm just waiting on the eye to heal so that we can figure out what reading glasses I need. Okay, so it is July 26th. Um, the title is The Absolute Approach to Healing, and we have three quotes today. Jesus said unto them, rise up, take thy bed, and walk. Uh, that's John 5, 8. The world is saturated with divinity and Im immersed in reality and filled with possibility. That is from The Science of Mind, page 490. And then the last quote is, we must not be disturbed by the contradiction of objective experience. We shall simply have to know that the truth we announce is superior to the condition which it is to change. And that is good for you, page 18, which um, Jesse loaned me and it's a workbook. Uh, it looks really, it's, it looks really interesting. It's also fat. So um, I'm kind of flipping through it occasionally. All right. So. In our approach to using the science of mind for healing, we do not make unrealistic claims. We do not say that a problem is not really there. We do announce that something else is there which can transcend the problem and bring about a healing. We have no quarrel with the medical profession nor its material diagnosis, but we often question its hopeless verdict because our experience has been that so-called untreatable conditions have yielded to spiritual treatment. Spiritual treatment is founded on the premise that of perfect God, perfect person, perfect being. In the affirmation of this principle, we look past whatever illness may appear and know that wholeness is already there. In short, Divine healing is always possible if we can believe that God is really the only truth, the only fact we need to recognize. No human ill is beyond the power of spirit because spirit is always already there. And when called upon, when recognized um, as existing within the person in need, that indwelling spirit will respond. The when absolute truth is accepted, the relative experience will undergo change and that and what we call healing, a healing will happen. This is never a question of our putting forth effort. We are not trying to cause something to happen. We are letting it happen. This is the meaning of the oft-repeated metaphysical and admonist admonition <laughs> let go and let god um i believe a miracle is a natural event in the spiritual world and in the world i now find my healing in and in that world i now find my healing there is no disease in my spiritual world there is no pain no cause for pain in spiritual consciousness and that is where i place my awareness my my faith right now i am where god is right here right now i accept this i know this i am in the presence that heals and the presence is with me and is blessing me now i await with pr the peace I, hmm, okay I await with peace the manifestation of my wholeness. It is already established and I am grateful. And that is Craig Carter. And that is a really long one. <laughs> so, um, my eyes are just tired. 
there were a couple of key phrases in here. One of them being uh, from that quote, uh, from that, the, the, the good for you. We must not be disturbed by the contradiction of objective experience. Uh, <laughs> contradiction of objective experience, the material experience. Um, basically, what, what I think Craig is saying is that there are two worlds, just like frequently we'll say that there are two truths. There's the truth with the little t, and then there's the truth with the big T. And the truth with the little t is, is objective experience. It is the material world. Um, it is true. The conditions that we are dealing with are real. But behind them is the big T, the big truth, the, 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 the reality with the capital R, which is the spiritual truth. Um, and, and anytime we talk about this, this particular subject, I always like to go back to, to, uh, Amit Goswami, um, and the quantum doctor, because that class really blew me away because what that class taught me is there's a material body and then there's a, there's a, a bliss body. There's a, there's the material idea of us, which is what is manifested. This is the bit that we can touch. Uh, but then there's also the bliss body, which is the perfect or whole idea of us. It is the perfectly working part of us. It is God's idea of us. Um, and that's, and so anytime there's anything going on, that's where I always want to go. I want to go back to the bliss body. I want to go back to God's idea because God's idea is perfect. God doesn't know pain. God doesn't know um, dis-ease. God doesn't know any of the, you know, the not whole, not, you know, not working. God doesn't know that. So I want to go back to God's idea of, you know, my eyes being uh, perfect you know, working exactly as they should. Um, and, and, and so I'm, I'm, what, what is it that he, that he said, or from that, that thing, um, we must not be disturbed by the contradiction of objective reality. So yes, right now, my objective reality is I've got double vision because my brain is currently freaked out because all of a sudden I can see out of this eye so much better than I used to be able to. And my brain is going, wait, wait a minute. I, and so it's taking my brain a minute to adjust. So, but God doesn't know this. God just knows that my eyes are perfect, you know, that they work exactly the way that they should. You know, my, my material brain is going, ah, and my spiritual brain is going, well, just take a deep breath and relax. We got this. Um, and so I think that that right there, do not, uh, do not be disturbed by the contradiction of objective reality. Go back to, it's always, always, always to go back to God's idea. It's always go back to God's idea. And anytime we do, when we talk about healing, we always want to just put that little footnote in there uh, that sometimes a perfect healing is shedding this form. All right. Uh, because, the, the, you know, the material, the material form isn't meant to last forever. It is meant to last long enough for us to do whatever it is that we came here to do. And then we're allowed to shed it to take on a new experience. So there was another one in here that was really... Okay, we do not say that the problem is not really there, but we do announce that there's something else there. We always acknowledge that God is in the situation. God is here the healing that is going to happen it's not our effort it's not our will it is not our willpower um so i like how he ends with let go and let god because it's not our willpower that we're using to make something happen if we're white knuckling it then we're doing it wrong um what we want to do is know the truth and allow spirit to take care of it let spirit's willpower which is so much greater than ours to take care of it um it's not about fate. It's not about fate. Uh, there was, and w w I like that he points out, we have no quarrel with the medical profession or their material diagnosis. Um, 
we believe in going to doctors. We believe that what doctors do, you know, doctors are God in action, just like we are God in action. And where their job is to take care of the material part of us. Um, that's, you know, that, that, that's their job. And so we want to work hand in hand with that. Yes. I wouldn't have cataract surgery. <laughs> yes. Um, in, 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 a pref in, in an effort to improve my, uh, my material vision, my spiritual vision is clear and my spiritual vision has no issues with me going and having the surgery. My, my, my spiritual vision has no issues with me making sure that I do what I need to do to take care of the material body that is carrying that spiritual part of me through and allows that spiritual part of me to do what I need to do. Um, all right. So in short, divine healing is always possible if we believe that God really is the only truth, the only fact we need to recognize. So we, that's, that's, that's the secret to spiritual healing, to always go back to God, to go back to God's idea. God's idea is perfect. God's idea is whole. God doesn't know. So when we go into treatment, what we want to do is state the spiritual facts and then give the spiritual facts time to per, uh, permeate into the material reality. Um, if you can do hardball metaphysics and, you know, then more power to you. And if you're like the rest of us who live in a material world, you know, we will live in a material reality. We live in a material body. Um, we know the spiritual truth. And we accept that sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Um, but in the process of allowing it to take a little bit of time, I still love that line. We must not be disturbed by the contradiction of objective experience. Go back to God's idea. That's always my favorite part. Um, when absolute truth is accepted, relative experience will undergo a change. So absolute truth, go back to the spiritual truth, and then the relative experience will change. It doesn't have a choice because it's being pushed on by a spiritual power greater than we are. Um, so the treatment that he does at the end of this, I believe a miracle is a natural event in the spiritual world. And in that world, I now find my healing. There's no disease in my spiritual world. There's no pain, no cause for pain in spiritual consciousness. And that is where I place my awareness, my faith right now. In spiritual consciousness. All right. Um, I am in the presence that heals and the presence is with me and is blessing me now. Uh, so the, <laughs> my brain just shorted out. Don't mind me. Um, lay down baby. Um, I would, I would say the mission today, should we choose to accept it? is to not be disturbed by the contradiction of objective experience. I just absolutely love that. And like I said, that's from Good For You, page 18. Um, and let go and let God. Let go and let God. Uh, don't try and use your willpower to do it. Uh, recognize that you have access to the greatest willpower ever. Um, but we got to be willing to let go. So that, that will be my, my challenge today is to let go. Um, what they want me to do is, un, uh, is to patch my unaltered eye to, to strengthen my, uh, altered eye. Oh, I'm working on it. So, um, patience is a virtue. Unfortunately, it's not one of mine. So I've been practicing my patience lately. All right, beloved. So you got your mission. 
as always, as I suggest, do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever it is. Doesn't matter. Point is practice on yourself. You deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. You're a beloved child of God. Please remember that. And no matter what is going on in your objective material reality, go back to God's idea of you. Because God's idea of you is love, kind, compassionate, and perfect, meaning whole. So, um, do something to engage your mind and your body. Drink plenty of water. Get that bright light early in your day. Reset those circadian rhythms and open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around you all the time. It's a state of mind. And in that state of mind, in that state of consciousness, you can create heaven wherever you are because you are there. All right. Um, catch us on the social medias. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan. I spent a good bit of yesterday working on my YouTube channel, which is probably why I'm a little bleary eyed today. Because uh, my eyes are going, could you take a break? <laughs> uh, uh, this, um, I'm normally very physically active and, and, you know, I like to read and all of that. And right now my body is going, we need a break. Stop it. So I'm going to attempt to stop it today. I did a talk once years ago called the stop it list. <laughs> there are a whole lot of things that we need to stop doing. Uh, and sometimes it's pushing ourselves. Okay. Um, there was something I was going to say and I don't remember what is. Oh yeah. The email. Uh, if you want to know what's going on at the center, please email info at creative life.org. That will get you on the constant contact. The hot links are hot. Uh, so have a great day, an amazing day, a wondrous day, a magical day, a fantastic day, an enchanted day, a magic, magic making day. I don't know where that one was going. A good day. If that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are not just as you are. Um, yeah. Take care of yourself. Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I'll be back with you around 9 a.m. Um, or not. I may be a little late tomorrow. So around 9. Um, I think I have an errand to run in the morning. Uh, and know that you're loved. I'll see you next time.